Oh, okay. That's the issue. Yeah, so I have my URL on the API distro into API distros slash one. Okay. <laughs> there we go. So now when I refresh, now we actually get back our uh, stuff. So now you see doing Ubuntu, Medora, OpenSUSE. And so just for uh, for completeness, let's go ahead and just the uh, last thing we haven't quite taken a look at yet is a, a single distro template. But there's nothing surprising here, right? Uh, just a simple little bit of HTML. We have our uh, distro object. And so we output the name as the title. Uh, go ahead and navigate to it. The name is the title. We have a website link to hit this week. So here's our website link just to the URL, hit this week. We have our screenshot image, and then we just have a description, and just some like, minor style. So that's the uh, world nope. tour of uh, AngularJS. Wow. Uh, any questions? Ah, so I'm sort of trying to figure out the context of this. Sure. It looks like it's a real compact language, very powerful, and there's just getting to be a lot of stuff out there. I'm just wondering if you see this as something that's going to be mainstream, or is this going to be like a specialty type of... I think we'll see it for these sort of uh, web applications that are sort of rich, right? Uh, where we want sort of like a lot of AJAX communication. So if you think of something like uh, even something like uh, Google.com, nowadays when we search, right, it's loading all this sort of like uh, via AJAX. So for these applications where we want this like uh, super sort of responsive thing, I think we will. There's actually a ton of different frameworks out there that are competitors with the Angular JS. Uh, in this regard. So I think it's a pretty uh, rich ecosystem we'll see a lot more. So have you seen this, or do you actually use all the other ones besides this? I have. I've used uh, AngularJS and I've used uh, DuranJS, which are both very, very similar. Uh, I think uh, Rick uses like a YUI, which has a similar sort of thing, like a similar sort of model view controller uh, yeah. yes. thing. So I have looked at that a little bit, although I couldn't do it just a little bit enough to have it. How so how big is the minified Angular? How big is the minified Angular JS? Uh, well, let's uh, take a look at it. Uh, so it is uh, ninety-seven kilobytes. Okay, okay, good. And you know, you put that on like a CDN or something like that, and you get the cache. It's uh, not too bad at all. How many ng dash things are there? Uh, there's quite a few. Uh, <laughs> Welcome to the problems. Yeah. <laughs> so, let's see, if we go to uh, API reference, uh, you can see this is a, mostly it's uh, around events, right? Let's say you want like a, a blur event or a focus event, right? Uh, click, yeah. Yeah, click. That's where most of them are. Right, so, okay, that's them pretty much right there that I just scrolled past, so we have like, uh, I guess I'm pointing to my screen, that doesn't even yeah. do you guys yeah. <laughs> right? Uh, so you can, ng value, uh, you see like our ng repeat, and then as I scroll up, that, so, I mean, it's like, it's a handful, but it's, yeah, it's definitely, like 50, definitely manageable, yeah, 50, right? 50, Especially because most of them are uh, event-based, right? So we know our, our click, our double-click, our focus, right, uh, that sort of thing. How long do you think you'd be proficient with it? Yeah, very good. Uh, so there's a couple levels of proficiency, right? Okay. Like uh, the sort of stuff we did here, that's pretty quick to get up and going, right? But, uh, I mean, it's probably just sit down one day and just do a couple hours work, right? And you'll be able to do stuff pretty quickly, right? Uh, there's this whole side of Angular we didn't quite get a chance to cover, which is custom tags. Right, so H so Angular gives you the ability to sort of add these, or has like these pre-built attributes and tags and stuff like that. You can add your own if it makes sense for your application. So one thing we could do here, it doesn't quite make sense for our application, but we could say make a, uh, a distro tag, right? And so this HTML list right here would just be a list of distro tags. Each one of these would be a distro tag. And so then, 
that getting into that sort of thing, like these custom HTML tags, that's sort of like another step of the thing. But that's sort of how you can have like reusable widgets across your Ajax page is by making these custom tags. And so maybe you want a calendar control, some of that you can make a calendar tag or something like that. Right? Do, uh, do you know do you, do you know uh, specific sites that are built with this? Uh, yeah, there's uh, quite a few. So uh, actually, I think there's even a site that uh, does that list. The so site. With, I list some of them, the ones that report themselves. And Google doesn't use this for like Gmail or anything like that, right? Uh, they do use it for some of their other sites that have some admin portals that use AngularJS. I think they're one of their, uh, is it DoubleClick, I think, uses AngularJS, something like that. Uh, but then you see like uh, some of these at more app sort of things, right? Like the YouTube app on PS3 is uh, built with AngularJS, right? That's a web application. Is so, there anything telltale in the URL or anything? Uh, no, not really. I mean, you can definitely look at the source, right, right to look at your JS, but there's, uh, there's, there's no real way you can tell just like looking at the UI. Okay. It's very cool. Yeah, it is really cool. Yeah. All right. Wow. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, fill out the, uh,